Welcome back. In this video we're going to um, continue our ratio analysis and we're going to start with the, the return on total assets. So the first thing we need to do is go to our income statement and find our net income or loss and here it is right here. Our net loss was $69.89 for 2010 so let's put that in our spreadsheet. So we have an equal minus 69.89 and we're going to divide that by our total assets so we got to go back to the income or the balance sheet and pick up our total assets which you see right here which is 305851 and we're going to put that in our spreadsheet 305851 hit enter and there you see we have a negative 2.29% return on total assets. Okay, so let's do the same thing for 2009. Okay, so we got to go back to the income statement. And in 2009, we had a positive number. So we had 26,428. We're going to put that in, 26,428. And then we're going to divide that by our total assets from the balance sheet. So let's scroll back. And here it is, 324.876. And that's what we're going to put in. Hit enter. Okay, so we have 8.13% uh, return. So we, we went from a pretty good return to a lousy one, or actually a loss. So um, let's do return on common equity and see how that one comes out. So let's do 2010. So again, we've got, actually what we can do is we can just copy these. Let's do it this way. And the only thing we need to change in the formula is instead of using total assets, we're just going to use common equity. Okay, let's see. Well, it's all common, so this whole thing here is, is going to be the number that we're going to use. So we're going to use this number right here, 207.053. And replace that total assets number with the 207.053. And that gives us a negative 3.38% return. And now we'll come over and do 2009. So we're going to get rid of our total assets here and replace it with our equity figure oh, here's the equity figure 211911 so let's put that in 211911 okay and in this case we have 12.47 percent so then again um, we went from a pretty good return to a lousy return Okay, the next one we're going to do is a little more difficult because we got to go hunting for the number a little bit. And I believe I saw um, the stock price, which is what the price in the numerator is in this formula. Uh, so we have to find the stock price at the last day of the year. So let's scroll forward. And if I recall correctly, I saw it on page 2. So I'm going to scroll back all the way back. If I can find page two, we're not far away. Here it is, right here. And you can see we have our 2010 column and we have our stock price at the end of the year, which happens to be $8.37. So let's put that in our spreadsheet. We have eight, whoops, I gotta put the equal sign in first. $8.37 and we're going to divide that by our earnings per share which we got to go all the way back to page 40 or 41 whatever it is here it is it's on 41 and we want the column for 2010 which is 0.095 oh I'm sorry 0.17 this one right here it's a negative negative 0.17 and we're going to put that in our spreadsheet 0.1 it's going to be a negative 0.17 okay 
think I got it that time. And okay, there we go. So um, we have a negative 49.235 as a price earnings ratio for 2010. And now let's do the same thing for 2009. So what we have to do is scroll all the way back to page two. Okay, here's 2009, and it's going to be $8.96. So let's put that in. We have $8.96 as a stock price, and we're going to divide that by our earnings per share for 2009, which is on page 41. I went a little too far, so I got to scroll back a little bit. Okay, here it is. It's this point sixty. Uh, yeah, point sixty four is our earnings per share. Okay, so we want to put that in. Point six four, and I forgot to put the equal sign in. So before I hit enter, let me do that. Okay, so we have uh, 14 as a price earnings ratio. So what that says is that um, the stock price is 14 times earnings. Okay, so we did the price earnings ratio and now we're going to do the market to book ratio. Okay, so again, we can use the uh, um, we can use the um, market price from this formula so let's just copy this and we're gonna then calculate the uh, denominator and get rid of what we have here this is earnings per share we gotta get rid of that and we're gonna calculate the book value so we're gonna put it in parentheses and we gotta go back to the balance sheet to find out what that is so here we have total stockholders equity at 207053. So we're going to put that in. 207053. And then we have to divide that by the number of shares. Well, where do we find the number of shares? It's right here in the stockholders equity section. Notice that these are in millions and these are in thousands. So what we're going to do here is delete the last three digits or round it up or down depending on what the case may be and so for um, 2010 we're going to take 41063 as the number of shares and we're going to put that in to our formula here 41063 close our parentheses hit enter and Okay, so we have a good market to book ratio. And we have to do the same thing now here for um, 2009. So let's get rid of our earnings per share figure and go back to over here on our balance sheet and pick up our uh, stockholders equity in, 2011, in 2009, which was 211. 911 and divide that by the number of shares which we're going to get over here this time it's going to be 4658 because we have to round up so let's put that in 40,658 close our parentheses hit enter and we have a good market to book ratio okay so um, We've completed our ratio analysis and you can see how things are going and, and now it's probably a good time to start asking questions why are things going up or down and it would also be a good time as I said at the start to do an industry analysis and compare um, how Dactronics is doing compared to the industry. So with that I'm going to conclude this video and we'll see you next time.